Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. After making a one foot by two foot by three foot closed box from a four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood, how much wood is left? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's just kind of quickly uh, think about this real quick. So we're gonna be making this closed box with these dimensions here, one foot by two foot by three foot. And we're gonna be making this box from this sheet of plywood, which is four foot by eight foot. And hopefully we have enough material uh, from this uh, sheet of plywood to make this box. And indeed we do. And how much wood remains after we make this box? Well, here is the correct answer. It is 10 square feet. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of calculating area and surface area because really that's what we need to do in order to answer this question. And we're going to need to know a couple of basic formulas. Really, we're going to just need to know one formula because uh, area and surface area are pretty closely related. So if you got this wrong, please don't despair. I'll have you looking like this in a minute or two. So let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. So first things first, first we have a math word problem. And in mathematics, anytime you have a word problem, read that problem at least three times. Now, a lot of you are like, well, I don't need to read it three times. I understand the problem. Well, here's what's going to happen if you only read it once and you just start doing things, you're not going to get, uh, oftentimes you're not going to have the best approach or you're going to misunderstand a, a part of the problem or you're going to really answer the wrong question. Now, how would I know this? Well, because I've been doing this for many, many, many years. I've made the mistakes and I've seen great students who definitely have the math skills to solve problems make a mistake because they just rushed the problem. So give yourself time read through the prom, think about the prom, but the best way to really kind of come up with the strategy for the prom is to model what's going on. And in this case, this is a great opportunity for us to come up with a visual model or a quick sketch because we have this box here, this closed box with these dimensions. And of course we have this sheet of plywood and we have to kind of think about this. So let's kind of visualize the problem right now. Okay, so here are our two parts of the problem we have this box and we have this sheet of plywood. Now we're gonna build this box from this sheet of plywood here. And you can see here, we have a one foot by two foot, and this would be the length and width, and then maybe the height in this dimension, but this would be the dimensions of this closed box. Now a closed box means that it's not open on one side. Let's say for example, like this, this part isn't open. So we're talking about how many um, sides to this box? Well, we're gonna need some ends right here. We're gonna need some sides, and then we're gonna need a, uh, some tops and bottoms. And we're gonna to have to cut uh, these respective pieces out of this piece of plywood. So for example, this piece right here, this would be what, one by two. We're gonna to have to go over to our uh, piece of plywood and uh, cut it out of the plywood to build this side. And of course, we have this side as well. So we're gonna to have to calculate how many components or um, the area of each of these respective components and we're going to have to kind of subtract it away from this plywood. So that's uh, basically uh, what we need to be thinking about and of course we need to understand how to find the area or surface area of these um, particular pieces and this is pretty easy because we're really dealing with rectangular or square uh, components. Well, actually all of these are rectangles. So let's go and get into it right now and again the strategy here 
is we want to compute the surface area, the total surface area for this uh, box right here, this closed box. And then, of course, we'll uh, calculate the surface area or area of this piece of plywood. Now, the surface area and area are the same for this uh, piece of plywood because really we're talking about one or two dimensional pieces because we have a length and width. And here, of course, these are two dimensionals, but they're kind of, you know, uh, these components are two dimensional, but the figure itself is three dimensional. So really here, we're kind of thinking about surface area. This would be area and or surface area, but basically the formula is the same, but let's go ahead and think about the plywood right now. So how do we uh, find the surface area or area of this rectangular uh, piece of plywood? Now, a couple assumptions here. The problem didn't state that the uh, plywood, this four by eight, is a perfect rectangle. So hopefully you are familiar by going just to your local, you know, home uh, store and you know what a, what a piece of plywood is, but this is a very common dimension and uh, this is just one gigantic piece of wood and it is a rectangle. So just in case you didn't understand that, we're dealing with rectangular figures here. So let's go ahead and calculate the area or surface area of the rectangle. Okay, so here is our formula. The surface area or area of a rectangle, pretty straightforward. It is the length times the width. So here is our length and width. So it's a four by eight piece of plywood. We gotta be very careful because we are dealing with the units of measure here. So this is eight feet by four feet. So our answer is gonna be eight times four, which is 32 feet squared. All right, let's uh, take a look at this real quick. So eight feet, now this notation is feet. Let me just go ahead and write this here. So this is eight feet. This is eight inches. Okay. So if you're not familiar with this notation, it's very important that you understand that, but let's just kind of write this out here. So this is eight feet times four feet. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply the numbers. So eight times four, of course, is 32, but then we're going to multiply the units of measure here. So feet times feet is feet squared. And that's really important. Anytime you're talking about surface area or area, you gotta get in those proper units of measure. So 32 feet squared, that is how much area or surface area is for this piece of plywood. Okay, so now let's get to the fun part, which of course is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. But really the fun part of this problem is going to be to calculate the surface area of this box. But uh, before we get into that, I really do need to ask for your support. Uh, making these videos is a labor of love. I love teaching mathematics, but really the um, the reason why I love teaching math is I love helping people understand a subject that oftentimes people just get frustrated with. I mean, there's just so many people who are like, ah, I hate math. I don't like math. And the reason people typically do not like math is because they don't understand it. So they just give up on it. And I am trying to do my best to uh, really teach math in a way that people like and understand because this has major implications in people's um, you know, goals and opportunities in life. I've run it, ran into so many people throughout the years, especially older adults, adults, excuse me, that have, you know, just kind of had this idea that they were bad in math for whatever reason. Maybe some uh, teacher way back in the good old days, you know, said, hey, you're going to be bad at math, or maybe you never really got the right kind of instruction. Whatever the case is, a lot of people went through their entire life thinking that they couldn't do advanced math, and maybe secretly they wanted to be an engineer. And, you know, you might think that I'm being a little bit dramatic here, but I am not. I have just really talked to so many people that, you know, wish they had a better opportunity to learn math when they uh, were younger. So, you know, I'm trying to prevent that case for anybody out there still learning. But if you are currently, uh, you know, older and you're just interested in math, that is fantastic. But, uh, you know, what I'm trying to do, again, is to reach uh, anyone out there and try to prevent that situation. So if you don't mind subscribing, that would be awesome. Make sure to hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's get back to this problem. Now, uh, we can kind of visualize this closed box in a couple different ways. So instead of um, really, you know, memorizing a bunch of formulas for surface area, just kind of use some common sense. So how many pieces are to this box? Now it's a closed box, right? So we're gonna have six pieces. Now I could kind of like break out, you know, a piece of paper or you know, like a piece of cardboard, if you will. We can kind of fold this. So this would be like the bottom 
And then here would be like the sides right here. And then we would need the ends. So how many pieces do we have here? One, two, three, four, five. So to fold this uh, over, I'm gonna need one more additional piece. So that may not be the uh, kind of easiest way to kind of see this uh, situation. Some of you might, uh, you know, use that, um, you know, visual model, but I kind of like to, you know, look at a 3D sketch and just kind of think about it, right? So let's see how many, you know, pieces that we need here. So we're going to have two ends. So this is going to be a one foot by two foot. We got to be able to uh, clearly see the measurements. So this is one foot by two foot. So this is one end and I'll call this, this side over here, the ends of this box. And you can see here, this is one foot by two foot. This is one foot by two foot. They're going to be the same pieces. So I go over to my piece of plywood and be like, all right, kind of measure out and cut out two of these one foot by two foot pieces that would cover the ends. All right, let's take a look at the sides here. So I would call these parts the sides. You can call them what you want, but this is going to be three foot by what? Well, this right here is one. This is three, so this is going to be three as well. So this, these sides here are going to be one by three. So you have to be very careful when you're looking at your little diagram here not to get confused. And that's why it's important that, you know, you try to be as neat as possible and construct, you know, the best sketch as possible. But anyways, we're going to have two sides at one by three. Okay, again, these are our sides right here. And then that's going to leave us our what? That's going to leave us our tops and bottom, which again are going to be the same dimensions down here. So our tops and bottoms are going to be what dimension? Well, it's three by two, right? So this is two here, this is two here, this is two, and uh, this length right here is three. So we're going to have to calculate the individual area of these, but we have duplicate uh, things, right? So in other words, if I can calculate the area of a side, well, I'll just multiply that by two because I have two sides, the bottom and the tops are the same. So if I can find the uh, the area of the bottom, just multiply by that two, that accounts for the tops. And then of course for the ends, all I need to do is calculate the surface area of one end, multiply it by two, add all this up and I have the total surface area of this closed box. Okay, so let's go to do that right now. So here is what we're gonna do. So we have two of these one by twos. Again, these would be the ends right here. So I don't need to calculate this again, just multiply this by two. These are our ends. Our tops and bottoms, okay, down over here are gonna be two by three. Okay, so we're gonna have two of these, a two by three. And then our sides will be one by threes. So we're gonna have two. So we just need to uh, do the math and calculate the total area for these respective parts. So let's go to do that right now. Okay, so uh, one times two, of course, we've got to remember the order of operations. Do everything inside the parentheses first, but this stuff, you don't even need to calculate, right? One by two is two, or one times two is two. Two times two is four. Now, we are talking about feet uh, squared here, but we could just kind of account for that in our final tally. So two times three is six. Six times two is 12. One times three is three. Three times two is six. And we have 12 and then four and six is 10. So altogether we have 22 square feet. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this all together. And of course we can't answer the question in terms of how much uh, wood is gonna be left, uh, you know, from after building this closed box from this sheet of plywood until we calculate the uh, area and surface area from both of these parts. Okay, so our final deal here is we have 22 square feet to uh, wood that we need to build in to build our closed box, and we have 32 square feet of plywood in order to do it. So how much wood will be left? Well, this is pretty straightforward. It's going to be 22 uh, take away, or we're going to subtract 22 from 32, which is, of course is 10 square feet. Okay, so that is the answer now. If a lot of you are looking at this, um, you're thinking, boy, I remember area and surface area. And uh, maybe you kind of want to relearn math, or maybe you want to learn some algebra and geometry, some basic math. Now, if you do, I have a great new course. I'm going to highly suggest it for uh, those of you that are either students, but particularly those of you that are interested in relearning math 
or maybe you uh, you never really learned math well enough, and it just didn't you know it doesn't sit with uh, you well. In other words, you're at a point in life where you're like, boy, I bet you, I bet you I could have um, you know learned math a lot better, especially if you had a math teacher like this guy on YouTube. But here is a deal: I want you to check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Right, that's a fantastic course for those of you that want to get back in math. Maybe you need to go back to school, or maybe you just want to relearn math, or maybe you want to learn math for the first time. It's a very versatile course, but very briefly, what you'll find in that course is a quick uh, few chapters on basic mathematics. Most people do not understand arithmetic well enough, and I'm talking about fractions, order of operations, just basic number operations. It's, it's really critical that you have a strong math foundation to build upon. But after I teach you um, basic arithmetic, basic mathematics, I'm going to get into a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, even some basic trigonometry and some probability and statistics. This is a self-paced course, and by the time you finish this course, you will have a fantastic, well-rounded education in, I would say, like high school level mathematics. And if you want, you can kind of continue on and take more advanced courses in algebra and or maybe even uh, trigonometry or pre-calculus. So if you need help at any um, you know level, whether it's basic math, algebra, or geometry, that's a great course. Now, if you are taking a specific course like pre-algebra or geometry or algebra two, you'll find links to those courses in the description as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.